Imagine constructing a man-made river across a terrain where water seems almost impossible to find. Libya's Great Man-Made River Project, GMRP, stands as one of the most extraordinary engineering achievements in history, designed to transport water from deep desert aquifers to the country's coastal cities, where the majority of the population resides. This immense project features over 4,000 kilometers of pipelines, providing nearly 70% of Libya's fresh water and transforming arid landscapes into habitable regions. With a design capacity of up to 6.5 million cubic meters of water daily, the GMRP is divided into five distinct phases, each overcoming monumental challenges in construction and logistics. Despite its groundbreaking success, the project continues to face significant hurdles due to ongoing political instability and conflict. As the project's future hangs in the balance, the question remains, can the great man-made river project truly fulfill its promise and stand as the engineering marvel it was destined to be? Water scarcity is a critical issue across Africa. But in Libya, it's a matter of survival. Nestled in one of the driest regions on the planet, Libya faces a relentless challenge, a land with no natural rivers and rainfall that barely reaches 100 millimeters a year. The parched landscape has left the nation clinging to its underground aquifers, but overuse and a rapidly growing population have pushed these vital resources to the brink. In the 1950s, during the hunt for oil beneath Libya's desert sands, a hidden treasure was uncovered. Vast underground aquifers holding ancient fossil water that had been trapped for thousands of years. This discovery was more than just a glimmer of hope. It was a potential lifeline. Yet the real challenge lay ahead. How to harness this water and deliver it across the vast, barren stretches of Libya to the coastal cities where it was desperately needed. This daunting task gave birth to the Great Man-Made River Project, GMRP, a colossal vision that seemed almost impossible. Launched in 1984, the GMRP aimed to transform Libya's harsh landscape by constructing an extensive network of pipelines to transport precious water from the southern aquifers to the densely populated northern regions. It was a race against time, driven by the need to secure water for millions of people and fuel the country's growth. The GMRP taps into four massive underground basins. The Nubian Sandstone Aquifier System in the southeast near the borders with Egypt and Sudan, the Sirta Basin in the central part of the country, the Merzuk Basin in the southwest near the border with Chad and Niger, and the Kufra Basin also in the southeast near Egypt. These basins collectively span hundreds of thousands of square kilometers and hold ancient fossil water deposited thousands of years ago. The project embarked on a mission to quench Libya's arid lands, weaving a vast network of pipelines across the country. In the northeast, phase one brought two million cubic meters of life-sustaining water daily to cities like Benghazi and Sirta. The network then stretched westward to Tripoli in phase two, boosting the flow to 2.5 million cubic meters. Phase three further expanded the reach, pushing the daily supply to 3.68 million cubic meters. What makes the GMRP even more astonishing is that Libya funded the entire project on its own without a single loan from international banks. The construction effort became a global collaboration with expertise and materials sourced from across the world. Yet, it remained a symbol of Libyan resilience and ambition. However, as we reflect on this vast undertaking, one question remains. How did the engineers accomplish such a monumental feat, constructing this vast network of pipelines and reservoirs in one of the most unforgiving environments on Earth? Often hailed as the eighth wonder of the world, the Great Man-Made River Project, GMRP, stands as one of the most colossal and intricate engineering endeavors ever undertaken. 
This massive network of pipelines and reservoirs was meticulously planned and executed over five phases, each phase designed to draw life-giving water from the deep aquifers of the Sahara and deliver it to Libya's densely populated coastal regions. The journey began in 1984 with Phase 1, a monumental task that involved the excavation of a staggering 85 million cubic meters of earth. This phase focused on drilling hundreds of wells across two major fields, tapping into water sources located approximately 500 meters below the surface. The extracted water was then transported through a double pipeline system that stretched over 1,600 kilometers to a massive storage facility from where it was distributed to key urban areas. The successful completion of this phase was celebrated when the first drops of water finally reached the coastal cities, marking a historic milestone in Libya's quest for water security. Building on this success, Phase 2, known as GMR2, extended the water supply network to western Libya. This phase involved drilling additional wells in the Jabal al Hasawana region, central Libya, and constructing two primary pipelines, one heading toward the mountainous Nafusa Plateau in the northwest and the other running to the coast. The system was designed to deliver an impressive 2.5 million cubic meters of water per day, ensuring a stable supply for both agricultural and domestic needs. Phase 3 expanded the network even further, adding 1,200 kilometers of new pipelines. This phase was divided into two parts. The first extended the existing system from Phase 1, boosting the total daily water supply capacity to 3.68 million cubic meters. This expansion required the construction of new pumping stations and additional pipelines to handle the increased water flow. The second part focused on supplying water to the city of Tobruk, sourcing it from wells in the al Jagbub oasis. This required the construction of a new reservoir south of Tobruk and an additional 500 kilometers of pipeline to ensure a reliable supply. The GMRP's vision didn't stop there. Phases 4 and 5, although not fully realized, were designed to connect the existing pipeline systems to new well fields in the western desert, further enhancing water distribution to additional coastal cities. If completed, these phases would elevate the GMRP's total capacity to a staggering 6.5 million cubic meters of water per day, supported by an expansive network of approximately 4,000 kilometers of pipelines. The scale of construction involved in the GMRP is nothing short of mind-boggling. Phase 1 alone required the production of 250,000 sections of concrete pipes, each measuring 4 meters in diameter and 7 meters in length, among the largest ever manufactured. To meet this enormous demand, two specialized factories were built in Libya, dedicated solely to producing these pipes. The pipes were laid in trenches up to 7 meters deep, with custom-built cranes lowering them into place, where they were meticulously sealed with giant rubber O-rings and cement grout before being backfilled to secure them. In addition to the pipelines, large open reservoirs were constructed at key distribution points, such as Ajdabia, where an artificial lake was excavated and lined with asphalt. The largest of these reservoirs, with a diameter exceeding 1 kilometer, has the capacity to hold up to 24 million cubic meters of water. International engineering firms from countries like South Korea, Italy, and Australia contributed to the design and construction of these facilities, despite Libya's political isolation under Gaddafi's regime. However, the GMRP was not without its challenges. The project's isolated nature and Libya's political environment limited international collaboration, slowing progress and forcing reliance on Libyan resources and select foreign contractors, leading to delays. The first Libyan civil war in 2011 dealt a severe blow when NATO airstrikes damaged the Brega pipeline, a key facility for producing concrete pipes disrupting the pipeline network. The second Libyan civil war in 2014 further exacerbated the situation, 
with neglect and vandalism taking their toll, including the dismantling of 101 out of 479 wells and the seizure of a water station by armed militia in April 2020, which cut off water supply to Tripoli. Despite these adversities, the GMRP continues to supply around 70% of Libya's fresh water. But with Phase 3 stalled and Phase 4 yet to begin, the project remains an incomplete yet vital achievement amidst Libya's ongoing turmoil. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more.